Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review movies and television shows. Today's topic is the film Midas Man. It's a biographical drama about Brian Epstein, one of the early managers of the rock band the Beatles. It follows Brian from the time he first discovered the Beatles right up until his death six years later. Bridget Grant wrote this story and Jonathan Wakem converted it into a screenplay. Joe Stevenson directed the film which stars Jacob Fortune Lloyd, Eddie Marsan, and Emily Watson. This film is part narrated documentary and part drama. It starts by introducing us to Brian and his family and tells us a bit about them. Then we see him discover the Beatles and talk them into being his first clients. From that point on, it shows us select moments from Brian's life during those six years and little montages where Brian tells us about how the band is doing on tour. We learn about Brian's personal problems with drugs and loneliness, and then finally the film ends on a high point before explaining Brian's death through subtitles during the epilogue. Midas Man is a fast-paced affair that tells us who Brian Epstein was, how he met the Beatles, and what their time together on tour was like. It doesn't give us the whole picture, but enough to understand his mindset before the end and what he meant to the band. It has nice little bits of music from the Beatles as well as a full soundtrack. Its visual journey has lots of wonderful emotional scenes and a few concert performances, and Jacob Fortune Lloyd does a fantastic job in the lead role. So let's get into it. The story is a consistent and well-explained tale about Brian Epstein's life. It gives us salacious details about his personal life and goes over the biggest moments in his career. They do an excellent job of explaining his charm as well as his major character flaws that would eventually lead to his downfall. They didn't always do well with the pacing though. There are big sections of the film that are kind of boring, and the montages where he explains the tours are a total snooze fest. The most exciting parts of the film are the big dramatic moments from his life and the concert scenes of the Beatles. The problem is that there isn't much drama in his life for the first half of the film, and there's only about four or five concert scenes in a two hour movie. The scenes also aren't full songs or even close, they're just little snippets to get the general feel. Cast-wise, there isn't a lot going on outside of the lead Jacob Fortune Lloyd. There's a few young men playing the Beatles and invoking their personalities and appearances. They do a great job of bringing the band to life, but don't get to do much in their roles. Ironically, Pete Best's character gets the most emotional performance out of the lot. Outside of the Beatles, there's a few managers and higher-ups, Brian's strict, well-to-do Jewish family, and a few friends and lovers of Brian's. They get to do solid little performances here and there, but nothing overly memorable. Jacob Fortune Lloyd gets the lion's share of the screen time and essentially has to play an extremely competent man, breaking down over time as the weight of his problems slowly crush him. He starts off as a wonderfully charming, well-dressed young bachelor and then slowly descends into madness. He gets addicted to drugs, enters into harmful relationships, and starts to worry about every last detail on everything. Fortune Lloyd shows off a lot of charisma in the role and gets to do a lot of subtle emotional work as well as a few big blowout scenes. There's one scene later in the film about Brian losing his confidence after a tragic breakup that was quite sad. Fortune Lloyd did an incredible job in it, and so did James Corrigan, who plays his sympathetic friend. Visually, the film isn't much to write home about. There's a lot of dramatic scenes of Brian rushing around talking to different people about the Beatles and his personal problems. There's also a few concert scenes of the Beatles in action and a few montages of them on tour. It takes place in England and focuses on normal scenery, a bar, a few fancy homes, some offices, and, and studio space. The camera work is clean and easy to follow, but the journey doesn't have many standout moments. The closest it comes is with the dramatic conversations and the concert scenes. The concert scenes are great at describing the feeling of a Beatles concert, but they don't go in-depth into any of them. The dramatic conversations feature some great acting, but don't take place in interesting locations or involve anything all that complex or aesthetic. They just did a good job of capturing the emotions. The sound-wise, the film has a plethora of music backing it from original Beatles songs to orchestral instrumentals. The instrumentals tend to have a jazzy light vibe to them that help create a classy but slightly sullen mood. The Beatles' songs show up during their performances and tend to show off how talented the band is and how Brian reacted to them live. 
They did a good job of capturing what made the Beatles famous through their sound, and the concert scenes are highly entertaining. For big emotional beats, the film uses scored orchestral tracks, which are complex pieces with a deep, rich sound to them. They bring out a ton of emotion from the scenery without making a big splash. The film uses them effectively to amplify the actor's work. Personally, I found the film a little confused in what it wants to be. It's about Brian Epstein, but it also spends a lot of time talking about the Beatles' achievements and not a lot of time talking about Brian's personal life. I thought Jacob Fortune Lloyd did a fantastic job with Brian's story and would have been interested to learn more about it. The music is great, the visual journey is easy on the eyes, and the cast does a fantastic job. It also tells you quite a bit about the Beatles, so if you're interested in that, you'll enjoy this film immensely. As for a rating, I'd give this film a 6 out of 10. Remember, these are just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye bye